Yo, yo, Daily Fire, episode 317. If it's trash, turn it off. But if it has value, please share it out for me. Of course, it's brought to you by MaxEffortMuscle.com for all your supplement needs. Go to Max Effort Muscle. All right, Daily Fire, episode 317. <clears throat> I came up with like four points that I think are extremely necessary if you want to experience some success. Are you ready for them, Cole? You ready? Oh, yeah, yeah. You ready? Okay. The people are ready. The people are ready. All right, Daily Fire, episode 317. Four things I think that need to happen if you want to experience success. Now, this could be in the gym. This could be in business. It could be in life. It could be whatever. But these are just a few things that I found out. Number one. You have to know how to work hard. Now, this sounds cliche, but I thought I knew how to work hard. And then I got the job as a coal miner. And then I really realized how to work hard. I saw my grandfather, my dad, my stepdad, my uncles, they all were coal miners. But I didn't really understand what that meant until I experienced it. Until I did my first double where I'm shoveling coal on my knees and literally the roof is this tall. And my back is rubbing against the ceiling and I'm shoveling for 15 hours. I get my bucket, I get a new light, and then I keep on going. And the reality is when I went through my most aggressive work week, which was 93 hours, not in a two-week pay, in a one week pay, 93 hours, I realized that's what actually working hard is. Now, I received a nice paycheck for that. I put it on my desk. I had about seven or eight of them piled up because at the time I wasn't even outside when the banks were fucking, like banks were open because I was underground working and there was no direct deposit back then because it was 1998. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, all right. So knowing how to work hard, if you haven't been around somebody that really puts some fucking work in sun up to sun down whether they like their job or don't like their job you need to get around them because the sooner you could get around somebody that knows how to work hard actually work hard you need to be able to see under the hood and see what that really means and even though the guys that i was around necessarily didn't like their job i realized what it was going to take so then back to my original point when I said, if I understand what that looks like and I apply it to fitness, it's a fucking wrap. It's a fucking wrap because if I take that work ethic and I apply it to something I love, how could it not fucking work? How could it not fucking work? That's what I thought. So that's number one, know how to work hard. But don't just like actually like, oh, I know how to work hard. No, like go get around somebody that knows how to work hard. Number two, you got to genuinely want to help people. So let me, let me tell you a story. Irene, my first client, I'm pumped. My buddy Reggie, he didn't want to train her no more because she said she wasn't serious. I said, Irene, I will take you as a client. I was charging $20 a session and I knew way more than Irene. Now I didn't know shit compared to what I know now, but I knew more than Irene. And Irene gave me that $20. And now all of a sudden I am a paid personal trainer. Now I made $21 an hour overtime as a coal miner. And after 40 hours, like I said, I had 90. I was in that overtime. So I'm thinking, I'm getting almost my overtime wage to train Irene. Now, when I, cho when I chose to train Irene, in that 12 weeks, she really got a lot better. And I genuinely wanted her to get better. Did I want to make more money? Did I want more clients? Did I want to be successful? All of that, yes. But I genuinely... Shout out to my mom. She raised me right. I genuinely care about fucking people. I hope when you watch this, you go, first off, fucking G is fucking crazy. But second off, he's making some fucking sense today. And at the end of the day, when I genuinely want you to get better, then you can feel that. And so every one of my clients that walk through my little 900 square foot studio when I'm 20 years old for $5,000, they knew I cared about them. They knew I would be consistent with my appointments. They knew I would continue to educate myself to get better. They knew I was there for fucking them. I'm still here for them at Corey G Fitness. I'm still here for them at Max Effort Muscle. I still care that you get results. Do you know how I think about it? I think about this. If you come through my system and you get better, that means you're a walking billboard for me. I don't have to ask people to tell people about the results. They're going to ask you about it. So don't you think that I genuinely want you to get better? Because if you get better, you get what you want. If you get better, I get what I want. It's a fucking marriage. 
And so when you gen, I'm just not there for the fucking money. There's no more money if you don't get results. It doesn't fucking work that way. I'm not here for some quick buck. I'm here to make like fucking some legendary shit of a long line of thousands of people that have got results. Do you understand me? So you gen, this is number two. Follow me. I know these are long winded. Number two, generally got to want people to get better. Number three, learn and educate constantly. I graduated with a 2.1 grade point average. Shout out Edison High School. Pull the transcripts. A little rough. I never read a book in high school. Actually, psych, I read one book. It was the Fab Five. Michigan Fab Five. I love their swag. Hey, I'm a Buckeye fan, but I love the swag. I love the way they did things on their own terms. I just like the whole fucking vibe. That was the book I read. So did I gain confidence by reading the Fab Five? Probably. Did I think, hmm, these guys are authentic. Maybe I should be authentic. Just be myself. Mm. So I gained a lot from it. But after that, I realized, one, I need to educate myself on business. No one taught it to me. I need to educate myself on financial literacy. No one taught it to me. I need to educate myself on more training methodology so I can test them out in the gym. I need to constantly educate myself. And I still am doing that every day. That's where the lunge and learn came. Lunge 800 meters. Listen to an audio book. I'm walking on the, excuse me, I'm doing like 45 minutes on a treadmill, listening to an audio book. I'm driving to the gym. I used to drive 35 minutes every morning to the gym, listening to the audio book. Every day. People think personal development is like some hokey ass bullshit. I, I don't know. I want to get smarter. Like I'm out here sharpening these fucking muscles, trying to get these abs. I want to make sure that my fucking mind is right too. Because guess what? When I walk in the room and I'm going against you for a promotion and I've been studying every fucking day and I've been disciplined, who do you think is going to be sharper in the fucking meeting? This is your competition. If you want to rise up, you got to educate yourself every day. Educate yourself about something you're curious about. Educate yourself something about something your family is deficient on. My family was deficient on financial IQ. I'm constantly trying to learn how to create wealth because I'm the fucking one that changed it all. And I'm still the motherfucking one that changed it all, but I had to educate myself every fucking day. So number three, learn and educate constantly. Number four, belief, vision, and perseverance. That's all wrapped in one, but we're going to go with that. All right, four, you got to have belief. I believed the day that I opened my first student. First off, I believed after I saved the money in the coal mine, I was going to be a personal trainer. Guess how many personal trainers I'd ever met in my life to that point? Zero. I didn't know one motherfucker that had that job. Now, that sounds weird, but there's no internet, and I live in the middle of coal country, Ohio. The guy that owns the gym, he works at the mill. You see what I'm saying? So I didn't like grow up and say, oh, I could go shadow this trainer. Or, oh, I know that guy. He makes 100 racks as a trainer. I didn't know one fucking trainer. So I had to have belief that this was the job for me because internally I knew it. I knew it was the only thing I liked to do. That I knew how to work hard, that I genuinely want people to get better, and that I wanted to learn about it. Which then means, why could I not believe that I could be successful at it? All right, number two, you got to have vision. I used to think to myself, gee, how would it be to have your own gym one day? One day happened faster than I could have ever realized. Now, gym is a little bit of a stretch. It was smaller than our fucking podcast studio. It was 900 square feet, but it was mine, and I had equipment in it, and motherfuckers came there to pay me, and I was 20 years old for five grand. So I had to have vision, like, how do I, and even in the spot we're in right this fucking second, I could see it in my head. I knew the town I wanted to be in. I knew the way I wanted it to look. I knew exactly how I wanted to operate. And then I worked backwards. So please have a vision slash daydream for yourself. And three, perseverance. I've had so many trying times to get to this point. And I have to lean on the things that I've been through multiple times in my career. Multiple times in my career. This shit ain't fucking easy. You have to be all of the reps at the 4 a.m., all the reps and the consistency with the mental, they all pile up. So when you get that, like, you know, adversity, perseverance moment that you believe in yourself that you can get on the other side of it, it's going to be scary. It's going to fucking suck. You don't know how long it's going to last for, but you have to believe 
that you can persevere and get on the other side. And every time I got on the other side, there was a blessing. That's straight from Andrew Carnegie. Every time you get on the other side, there's, there's something else for you. You have to believe, you have to have the vision, and you got to be able to persevere. At the end of the day, it is not going to be fucking easy. If you want to be the one, you want to be the one. Like when I say like the one, you, you want to be the one that changes everything, you're going to run into all of it. You're going to run into that you have to create the vision. You're going to run into that no one else fucking believes but you. And you're going to run into a ton of things where you're going to have to persevere through. And so when, I, when I'm shouldering some of that shit and I know it's going to be hard, it sucks. Guys will hear me bitch about it. But I think about the strategy. I think about what I've been through before. I think of how I got to get through it. And I think, what's on the other side of this thing? What's on the other side of this? Because I believe in myself. All right, so let's run back through them real quick. Ready? Daily Fire, episode 315. Number one, know how to work hard. If you think you know how to work hard, try to find somebody you, you think that works really hard, right? Or, or works harder than you work, just to see how they operate. Number two, got to want to help people generally. Like, I genuinely want people to be successful. Like, I really care. Like, that, that's huge. Number three, learn and educate constantly. The first time you think you know it all, you're going to get fucking smoked. So just, just know that. And number four, belief, vision, and perseverance. Daily Fire episode 317. Daily Fires is back, motherfucker. Let's go. <laughs>